The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Adrian Spence, and Adrian is the founder and artistic director of Camerata Pacifica. Welcome, Adrian. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. Oh, gosh. I know you have quite a story to tell, <laughs> and I can hardly wait. I'm an so, Irish guy. I'm full of, sto <laughs> full of stories. <laughs> so tell us about Camerata Pacifica, what you're up to these days. We'd love to hear it. Well, we're just, we're emerging from a shutdown. So we did our first set of concerts about three weeks ago. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're back on the concert stage again. It, it's back to live music and oh my goodness, it, <laughs> it feels so good. Oh gosh. Um, just, you, you, we hear the same stories again and again from, from audience members or other musicians that um, I, I think for many aspects of our lives we took we took a lot of it for granted. We oh, took a lot yes, of a lot of the, the treasures that we enjoy. Um, we t took for granted, and um, so now to have this music again and to have the this community gather around it, the 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 intensity and and, and the power is so much more evident. And there the, the, there were lots of tears oh, in the I in the bet. first just just the. For musicians and, and, and audience members alike, just the, the relief of engagement once again. Oh, gosh. So, so I was <coughs> um, reading on your website that Camerata Pacifica specializes in chamber music in mm -hmm. intimate settings. That's so key. That's key. Tell that's, us that's about a, that. That's a signature of what we do. So chamber music... You know, it's it's like so. A symphony is like an American football team. You know, there are there were there like are a hundred players on the American football yeah. team, where they, yeah, all yeah. these people are on the field. Chamber music's more like doubles tennis, and so it, it, it's it's and it's usually a composer's most personal expression. Mm. And uh, chamber, uh, it's written the chamber is a room, so okay, okay. Uh, so uh, a room as opposed to a concert hall. Okay. So, frequently you'll find chamber music played in large theaters, which is is just wrong. It's not it's not written for that. Oh. And so, the what what we've done at the Camerata, we very intentionally kept kept the music into in small halls. So we play in halls that are around three hundred people. Han Hall at oh, the Music okay. Academy of the West is, it, and it's actually acoustic. It's one of the finest halls I know anywhere. Oh. Um, and you get. Uh, you, you end up getting a contact with the music. It, it's it's a much more visceral experience, um, and a, mu a much more intense experience because um, you're there and, and and you you can hear the breath. You can hear the breath of the, of the violin player, of the cello player, which normally you don't. The wind players, you or the flute players, or clarinet players, you expect yeah. to hear breathing, but you'll you'll hear um, string players take breath. You'll hear the grit of the bow on the string as opposed to the, just the music. And it's, it's a much more intense experience. So you're the founder. <clears throat> I am. Tell us, you know, what your original intention was. What went through your mind? What was the impetus <laughs> for Very, this? very little goes through this mind. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> I it's, doubt that. Or it's in one ear, <laughs> not the other, my mother, my mother would say. Um, I was 25 at the time, and I'm a flute player by training. And I was uh, starting to freelance uh, down in LA. And I just, you know, I arrived to America and, and totally bought into the, 
the, the idea of the American dream that if you work hard enough and, and you're, you're dedicated and and uh, yeah and I, I saw the streets paved with gold and just <laughs> and, and it I've lived it um, and at that time I was full of the the ideals of a, a 25 year old musician and and just was was dedicated to bringing this music at the at the highest possible level to the greatest number of people and so it didn't there was no nothing really went through my mind other than play the music and play the music for people mm -hmm. and it it started and and the first performance was December 3rd 1990 in the Libero theater oh my god there are people coming to our concerts today that were there oh, uh, that have been there for 32 seasons 1990. and it took off um, and yeah it's gone through a number of iterations so originally I used musicians based in Southern California mm -hmm. but then we wanted to significantly increase the rehearsal schedule and, and um, not all those musicians were uh, available to me because many of them worked in the studios. Mm -hmm. So my line was, I didn't, I didn't just have to compete with uh, the LA Opera, but I was competing with Bugs Bunny. And, uh, <laughs> so um, around 2000, uh, our piano player, a lady called Joanne Pierce Martin, became the keyboardist for the LA Philharmonic. And, oh, so, and that, so we used that as, as a trigger for change. And it, it became, at that point, it became an international ensemble. So now what we do is we bring musicians from all around the world. I, on my core roster, my clarinet player is Spanish. My oboe player is English. I've got a Korean violinist. I've got a Taiwanese violinist. Um, and we're bringing guests in from Holland and St. Petersburg this season. Gosh. And so we bring them into Santa Barbara <clears throat> and go through another signature of Camerata Pacific is a very intense rehearsal period oh. where um, we'll rehearse f maybe 40 or 50 hours on a program, which is a huge amount of rehearsal time. Um, before we take it to them, we have four venues. We have subscription series in Santa Barbara, Ventura, at the Huntington Library in, in San Marino, uh -huh. and downtown LA. Oh, okay. And so when we get these quite literally world-class players and give them an abundance of rehearsal time, magic is the result. Oh it, gosh. It, it truly is magic. And so these musicians come from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And what, do they stay in town for a season or what? No, they, they, the, the, these, these musicians are, once again, they, 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 uh, they are truly world class and they have busy schedules. And, oh. And, oh. and so they come in, they'll be here for, they usually come in for about a two week period. Okay, okay. Sometimes some of the musicians will appear with us four or five times in a season, some of them just two or three, depending on what the music is. So it's like doubled tennis, but I'm constantly swapping the players out. Okay, so, so, so it may be, so the, the concert, we, we've got, a, the next concert we've got coming up, we're doing some Baroque music, Italian and French Baroque, with flute, bassoon, and harpsichord, and piano. But then a couple of, of concerts in the future, we've got marimba and percussion and a whole bunch of wind players wow so and so it'll, it constantly mixes up so so, so you come to one concert you're not going to be able to predict ah. what the next concert is going to be like ah so oh, yeah. not to come to all i'm of them. just <laughs> you know that's just cut to the chase right away yeah so your flute player for example is not always the same flute player you can so switch them out. we we I, I, I have an ensemble, so I, I have a, an ensemble of, of principal players. The flute player for Camerata Pacifica was yours truly oh. until three years ago. <laughs> so now we're looking for, we're actually looking for flute, a flute player, a bassoon player, and a viola player. Our viola player, a chap called Richard O'Neill, um, just was appointed uh, to be the violist for the Takash String Quartet, which is one of the great quartets in the world. Wow. So, really? you know, it's like, mm. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't mean to drop names, but <laughs> I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm quite, quite happy to do so. Good, good. So, now tell us a little bit about how 
um, COVID has impacted Camarada? Well, wasn't that a shock? Yeah. Um, so February 2020 was our last performances and then they closed all the concert halls. We were fortunate right off the bat because in, in 2009 I started videotaping concerts. So we've got quite a, 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 an archive, a video archive. In fact, we've got a, a YouTube channel that has about 6,000 subscribers all around the world and over 2 million views. Wow. Which for a, a little chamber music group is huge. That's, yeah. So when, when the, the shutdown occurred, the lockdown occurred, everybody was scrambling for online, to create online content and we had this huge resource, so we just hit play. And oh, it, you know, it, it's, it's been a, a tragic time. I mean, one can't, um, we can't ignore the loss of life across the world. We can't ignore the loss of life in this country and the impact upon those who are left and the economic impact. It, it's been a dreadful, dreadful time. But some silver linings have come out of this. And we ended up in, in a collaboration with UCLA Health. Ooh. who spotted our online streams, our online broadcasts. And every patient bed at UCLA has its own iPad. And so now on each of those iPads, there's a dedicated camera out of Pacifica channel. It's called the Nightingale channel. Wow. And it's being picked up by hospitals across the country. It's been oh, picked gosh. up by USC, the Keck School of Medicine, UC Davis. Um, Luma Linda, we're talking with College Hospital, we're talking with the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Um, and it's just a really heartwarming program. It was, it, it's like a Netflix channel for classical music. And as, as we were putting it together and I was making the programs, it, it, I find it really difficult because <clears throat> Most of the people who go into hospital, you're in for a short time and, mm -hmm. and then you're out with successful outcomes. There are other people going to be in there for extended stays and, 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 and with a grave future. And we wanted to provide programming that, that would touch every, every person, no mm. matter what challenge they were facing in hospital at that time. And whether or not um, you're an aficionado of classical music, when you encounter this, um, you, you realize that, that um, you, you're in touch with something that, that's much greater than the individual, that you're connected with something that's timeless and it's extended centuries yeah. back and will extend for centuries ahead of time. And while we hope, you know, why, why we share this with our live audience, I've, I've also been conscious with this Nightingale channel of those people at their, at their lowest ebb facing their most challenging time in the middle of the night when they're yeah. alone. Yeah. And, and the channel um, affords uh, anybody who wants to listen to it in hospital at any time of the night. It's just, it's available. And it, it, it's one of the more touching results that, that have come out of COVID and one of the more touching projects for Camerata Pacifica. Gosh, and what a gift you have given to the world through that. Jeez. I think, uh, I think music is, yeah, I think music is a gift we're all given. I, I talk about it, um, uh, the privilege it is to be a musician or to be the artistic director of, of Camerata Pacifica because I feel very strongly that, um, that we have a responsibility to this art form that the, the American composer, Aaron Copeland, mm -hmm. described as one of the glories of mankind. Ah. And, and we're stewards of that art form. And, and the time that, that we're privileged to have with it, I think it's our responsibility to hand it to the next generation in a better condition that yeah. it was handed to us and just to keep moving the thing forward. That is so beautiful. So. 
You know, I'll bet there's probably some research about how the music could actually enable healing or it's so this is this coincides with with uh, just a, an explosion of research for for exactly exactly the, these purposes and um, Nightingale Channel is, is developing an advisory panel of doctors and researchers who are who are sharing this scholarship with us because now it, it's become it's the, the research is ongoing. And it's becoming increasingly clear that it does. It helps PTSD, it, it post surgery, post operation. Yeah. It helps the recovery, um, mental health, um, and, and just wow. emotional healing. So you know, we, we don't. We, we I think it, we can get a little carried away as music, and we say you know music heals. Is sure, this? Sure, no, sure. no, it doesn't. No. Neosporin heals. Is there yeah. antibiotic? <laughs> antibiotics. You know <laughs> your vaccination. But um, but I think in, in I think. Uh, the, the, this, the, this encounter in music can, can um, support um, the, the, the natural healing processes or the medical healing processes in the body and uh, certainly emotionally it, it's, oh, going, yeah, it's yeah. going to provide a connection and a, and a reward and a, and a solace and a comfort. That is just, now Comrade Pacifica <laughs> is a, a 501c3. Oh, we are indeed. It. We are indeed. And I'll bet on your website yeah, There's a I know where you're going. Yes, button. yep. People and you would gladly accept financial just, donations. I've never been known to turn one away. <laughs> well, that's good because my guess is there are a lot of people watching this who will say, oh, "I want to contribute to that." Yeah, well, well, please do. So not only, uh, well, you know, the best way you can contribute is come to a concert. Yeah, yeah. And right. let, 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 so let's make it transactional. You show up, give us some money, and we'll give you a ticket. There you go. Um, but you know, also if you now what we're increasingly finding interesting is is our our work uh, in the field of wellness. Oh, so at the Nightingale Channel. So, yes, yeah. yes. Now, do you think that um, some of the patients that have benefited from your music when they were in hospital maybe go back and tune in? To you in some way that they undoubtedly, would not otherwise have. yeah, undoubtedly, you know, we we've well, so, so we we have the Nightingale channel, which is specific to hospitals, but then we have our YouTube channel. So if you Google Camarada Pacific, okay, so. then boom, yeah, there's yeah. There, there's a ton of video out there, yeah. So for for the viewers, you know, it's like you know, you don't have to take my word for it. You can you a fair bit of research you can conduct yourself, and then realize just how much better it yeah. sounds in person. Yeah, oh right. And so, speaking of the website, a person can go on the website and, and see your schedule, mm -hmm. where you're gonna play, Yep. all that. Mm -hmm. Basically, so we've got a, a somewhat reduced season um, uh, in the, this first post-COVID season because everybody's hedging because we don't know, right, we don't right. want to face cancellations again. But generally, Camerata Pacifica performs once a month. Oh. In the season between September and May, we perform once a month each, oh, okay. uh, each, each performance in, in all of the subscription venues. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to know. Well, I'm going to tune into your website. Yeah, well, there you and go. Show up at your concerts. I can hardly wait. On your bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't be w riding my bike this time. <laughs> so, um, so, Adrian, we have about a minute left. Is there anything else you'd like the audience to know about Camarada Pacifica? You know, um, we're, we're in this post-COVID time, and Camarada Pacifica, so I was saying to you a little earlier before we started, it, it seems to have been divided into people who can't wait to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. and good luck to those folks. Yeah. And then the group of which Camerata Pacifica is a member who are, we just cannot wait for the future. The future is so bright. This is the golden age for classical yeah. music. This is the best time. There's more music out there, excellently performed. It just, the widest range of music you can listen. There's more music than you can imagine. Wow. And the future is bright, and Camerata Pacifica is happy to be part of it, and we will welcome anybody who wants to come to our concerts. Oh my gosh, and the irony is that a lot of that possibility uh, has been revealed through a pretty big challenge. Yep. Which yeah. says a lot about you and your group and your folks. Well, thank you. Gosh. 
that. Well, thank you for blessing our lives in such a beautiful yeah, way. Thank you, thank you. And for being so, on our show today. Well, we what a pleasure. A and what a pleasure to meet you. So, <laughs> and to meet you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.